uh, Michael Flynn's tenure in the White House. And, and this seems pivotal because this was a key moment for you as reporters to break through the denials of the Trump administration and run with a story, even as you were getting no's, 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 denials, denials. And that must have been kind of a nail biter for mm -hmm. you guys, despite having a lot of sources. President Obama warned President-elect Trump, um, don't hire Michael Flynn. Mm -hmm. He did anyway. Why is that such a pivotal moment? Why is it such a pivotal character as you reflect, even a couple years later, on his very brief tenure in the White House? Uh, I'd tell you a couple things about that. I mean, Flynn uh, became the national security advisor for Donald Trump. He ignored Obama's advice. Uh, Flynn had been essentially fired as the director of the Defense Intelligence Agency under the Obama administration. And he was so embittered by that that he became this really strident um, um, partisan against the Democrats in a way that made even a lot of his peers in the military. This is a guy who had a very highly decorated career in the, in the Army um, for decades. Um, and his behavior after his termination was really troubling to a lot of his friends. He latches on to Trump. He becomes this uh, figure who's uh, showing up and, and, and rallying the base at lots of, um, of Trump's political appearances and things like that. But I think the significance of this is that, so once he becomes national security advisor, the designated national security advisor in the Trump administration before it's even in office, I mean, it's just such an important job. He becomes, you know, you have all of this crazy interaction between people close to Trump and Russia throughout the campaign. Paul Manafort, you have these sort of second tier characters who are like Carter Page, George Papadopoulos, who are on the Trump campaign who are having weird interactions with Russian individuals. But here's Michael Flynn, decorated three-star army general, who he also has had these troubling interactions with Russia. And he is the one who sort of executes what, to this point, still looks like the closest we've seen to a kind of a quid pro quo. Um, one of the looming questions over all of this is what has Russia gotten out of it? Well, Russia really wanted a lot of things. They wanted sanctions to be lifted for starters. And Michael Flynn is telling Russia in late December, we got you covered, basically. Sit tight. Once we're in office, we're going to review all of this stuff. Don't worry about it. We're going to take care of you. Um, the book really details, I mean, this was a huge story for Ellen, myself, and our former colleague, Adam Entis who was a terrific reporter and who was responsible for a lot of these stories that we broke on Russia uh, and Trump. Uh, and, the story, and, the, and in the book, we, we unpack this. And, and, and there are new scenes in the book about when the FBI comes to visit Flynn to interview him in the West Wing, in the White House. Lawyers at the NSC learn about it late, run down to his office, try to cut off the interview. They get there too late. Flynn is coming out of his office. He's already patting these FBI agents on the back, he's already taken a fatal step that's going to lead to a criminal conviction in that very moment. Initially, he denied that he discussed sanctions at all with the Russian ambassador. And you had nine sources? Is that the point where you had nine sources on this story? Yeah, right. Um, and, and so you and your editors had to make the call of whether to go forward with the story when you were getting a very strong denial uh, yeah, this was one of the, so one of the things we do in the book, too, is we turn the camera back on ourselves. We, we look inside the newsroom at some of the, the key moments in this, and this is one of them. So we, Adam, Ellen, and I had been working on this story about Flynn for weeks, struggled to gain traction. Adam got a breakthrough with one source. Then we started to get other breakthroughs that told us, that made it clear Flynn was not telling the truth about his interaction with the Russian ambassador. He was lying about that. Uh, and. Um, we had another colleague, Karen DeYoung, who was, had a previously scheduled interview with Flynn. She was going over to the White House on a Friday night, to talk, or a th Thursday night perhaps, to talk to him just about the, his foreign policy objectives in the Trump administration. And we knew that she was going. And we asked her, wait till the end of the interview, but then ask, tell him, ask him one more time, did he talk sanctions with the Russian ambassador? And tell him, we have sources saying he did, and we're getting ready to run a story along those lines. He says to her, no, no, no. She comes back to the, to the post. We put the story on hold because his, his no was so categorical it sort of caught us off guard. Um, and we wanted to, and you know, this is, these are these really high stake moments where you're happy to have 
uh, leadership like Marty um, and Cameron Barr, the managing editor, and Peter Finn. We waited that night. We regrouped, had a meeting the next day in Marty's office. We talked about it. Marty decides, evaluates our sourcing. We decide we're going to publish anyway. We'll use Flynn's denial. We need to call him to tell him that. So I call the White House saying, we're going forward with the story. We're going to use them, him denying it. And they say, OK, wait a minute. We need to modify his statement. <laughs> Flynn now cannot be sure that he didn't raise the subject of sanctions. He doesn't recall whether he discussed sanctions. It was just one of those moments where you just knew you finally had it. Uh, it, it, it his whole, this lie that had been presented to the American public, it involved the, the incoming vice president of the United States, it involved the, uh, the, um, the White House spokesman, crumbled in that instant. 